Good afternoon. My name is Lily Kossoff, and I'm a junior here at Carrollwood Day School. Today, I'm going to share with you my passion, which is unexpected victories. Finding your passion is unique. Developing your passion is difficult, but succeeding within your passion, especially with unexpected victories, is indescribable. From the time before I knew how to walk, I knew how to swim. Over the past 16 years that I have been swimming, I have developed this addiction to the pool. In fact, I may be one of the only 17-year-old girls that prefers the smell of chlorine to roses. Though this may set me apart from most adolescent girls, I'm like any other teenager in the sense that I would love to be able to sleep in until noon on a rainy Saturday morning. But it is my drive and my tenacity that helped me to drag my lazy behind out of bed before sunrise to make practice. Now, the reason I'm so adamant about trading in my warm bed and my fuzzy socks for a mere bathing suit is a personal commitment to being the very best that I can be. This entails, like I said, practice before sunrise, working so hard there are tears in my goggles, and making friends I may otherwise never have made. And it's a love for the rush of adrenaline I get after never giving up on myself, no matter how hard it hurt. Out of all the emotions that swimming puts me through, the best and my most coveted feeling is that of reaching out for and grabbing onto an unexpected victory. What I mean by this is out touching the person next to me, even if they had a faster time than me going in. Or finishing my race and looking up at the scoreboard and seeing a time I don't believe, all while listening to the screaming and the chanting of my teammates. One of my favorite memories of an unexpected victory was just this past Valentine's Day meet. This meet was different than most typical club meets because I was able to eat a lot of food that day. And I wasn't trembling, nerves, or anxiety. I felt rather confident in my abilities, so I was excited to swim my best. Though I have been swimming for such a long period of time, one of the biggest struggles I face is focusing, of, focusing on the times of the people around me rather than my own. So this Valentine's Day, I made a promise to myself that I would focus only on my times and the aspects of the swim that I needed to remember. So my mom was gracious enough to write down my heats and my lanes for me from the sheet of paper that held all of that information. I swam quite a few events that day, but today I'd like to focus on the 100-yard freestyle, which is for laps for those of you who don't speak swimming. This was my last race of the day, and I was pretty excited for it. So before stepping up onto the block, I did my typical routine. Shook my right arm, then I shook my left arm, then I shook my right leg, then I shook my left leg, then I jumped up and down, then I snapped three times, twice on my right and once on my left. And then I heard the official blow the long whistle, so I stepped up onto the block. And then I heard the official say, take your marks, and I grabbed onto the block with intensity and force. Then the machine beeped, which, which signals the start of the race. My mind was blank. My peripheral vision was non-existent. And to be completely honest with you here today, I don't remember much of that race. Before the meet, my team and I had viewed the documentary, Touch the Wall, featuring Missy Franklin and Carolyn Joyce. From this documentary, my team and I absorbed the following information. To finish your race on your side, that way your fingertips touch the touchpad first. So I saw the tee at the bottom of the pool, and I started kicking really hard, and I shot onto my side. And to my disbelief, I had finished first. This was not something I had done in a very long time. And so I grew so excited, not only by this, but also that I had accomplished a personal best. And when I finished my race and I looked up at the scoreboard, I saw that the times of the people around me were hundreds of seconds off of mine. So after congrat congratulating those who swam around me, I went and I talked to my coach about this unexpected victory. And I had realized this swim, this unexpected victory, would have been impossible had I not been so adamant about going to practice every single day and trying my best. But I may have made it seem as though achieving a victory is simple. All you have to do is go to practice every day and work really hard. This isn't always the case. Two years ago, I had reached a tough point in my life, and I was forced to make a difficult decision. I could either move teams or I could stay with the one where I was at. So I had made up my mind. I would move teams to live up to my most full potential. But then I realized that swimming had become physically harder for me. So I saw a doctor who essentially said, congratulations, Lily, you're allergic to earth. I learned that I was allergic to some of my favorite foods, grass, trees, bugs. You get the idea. So I started a rigorous treatment program that, require, that would require me to leave the pool for about a year. 
And like I said, I'd been swimming for over 16 years, so this was pretty tough on me. But I knew that if I wanted to achieve success, it required giving up a little to achieve a lot. So it is now in my speech that I ask you to silently, like Dr. Hodges said, think of your passion. What's something you could do for hours without growing bored or becoming tiresome? Let's say you have an affinity for being an actor or an actress. And you go to an audition, but you don't get a callback or you don't get the part. You can't simply throw your hands in the air and say, oh, I'll never be an actor or I'll never be an actress or a Broadway star. No, you have to go to that next audition and you have to try again. Or let's say you felt super prepared for this math test and you're like, all right, I'm gonna ace it. But then you don't. Worst case scenario, you fail. You have to learn from your mistakes and you have to try again. Persistence and commitment to achieving excellence within your passion is key, but impossible without two aspects. Passion and dedication. Passion is a word I typically equate with talent, something you're good at without having to try really hard. And dedication is a word I typically equate with hard work. It's the commitment to yourself every single day to achieve success. There's a famous quote that goes around the swimming community. 10% talent and 90% work. This 10% could be the natural inclination for math, sciences, reading, or writing. This 10% is the purities of the sport or the activity that don't require the strenuous side of anything. But that 90%, that 90% you see up there, that's hours of the same mental game. That's hours of training your mind to tell yourself that no, you're not tired. No, you will not give up. Instead, it's yes, I can do this. Yes, I can finish these last 10 busy work problems because I know that doing so will pay off. Yes, I can finish studying for this science test because I know that it will help me. Yes, I can finish this submission paper. Yes, I can finish these last 25 yards. Yes, I can keep the lead in this race for the pure fact that touching that wall first could lead to a million and a half other possibilities. Passion and dedication can take you as far as you want to go in life because only you know the unexpected victories that could lie ahead. Passion and dedication are some of the most powerful tools you were given. Developing your passion involves twists, turns, bumps in the road, but never giving up on your passion and working through these hardships and experiencing your victory despite them, that will always be worth it. Thank you.